Good job us again, everyone. It's wonderful to see so many of you here with us in our sanctuary and those that have joined us virtually as well. This is a new tradition that we started just a few years ago. The Shabbat before many of our precious graduating seniors head off to college, whether they're freshmen or seniors, wherever they may be going. This is our chance to speak with them and to them and do the best we can again one more time while we have a chance to prepare them for their days on college campus. I was very blessed to go to the University of Texas and when I look back at my life I would say that one of the key reasons why I decided to become a rabbi was because of my experience at the Texas Hillel. And I feel very fortunate and I'm very happy about the fact that Hillel, the University of Texas at Austin, has never been in better shape due to the work of many members of this congregation and other dedicated volunteers, lay leaders here in Houston and of course in Austin. And a major part of that credit goes to the terrific and extraordinary director of our University of Texas Hillel, Maya Edelson. We are very blessed tonight to have Maya who in just a moment will address us all. But before she comes to the Bima, let me tell you just a little bit more about Maya and why I believe we are so fortunate to have her here in Texas serving this all, an all important role as an executive director of the Hillel in Austin. She's been the executive director since 2017. And prior to her arrival to the 40 Acres, Maya spent five years with Maryland at the Maryland Hillel as assistant director and director of educational engagement, and previously worked as a program director at Hillel at Davis and Sacramento. In 2015, Hillel International named her a Richard M. Joel Exemplar of Excellence. As executive director, my works closely with students, staff, and the broader community to advance Hillel's work on campus and to inspire every Jewish student to create enduring commitment to Jewish life, learning, in the state of Israel. Maya holds a master's degree in experimental Jewish education from the Jewish Theological Seminary of America and a bachelor's degree in sociology from Columbia University, where she was captain of the women's softball team. Maya competed for the Israeli national softball team for 10 years, from 2003 to 2013, traveling to six different countries representing Israel on the diamond. She's been an educator at both Camp Elonim and Camp Ramah, and has been part of leading over 15 student educational trips in Israel, Poland, and throughout the United States. She also completed the Shalom Hartman Institute's Fellowship for Campus Professionals and is part of the prestigious Schusterman Fellowship. In addition to her leadership at our Texas Hillel, she is pursuing a doctor in education with a focus on organizational change and leadership from the Razier School of Education at USC. Maya is married to Dr. Jerome Edelson, a physician at Brook Army Medical Center, as they reside in Austin and in San Antonio. Please join me in giving a big Beth Yashirn welcome to Maya Edelson. Thank you so much, Rabbi Strauss, for the invitation to join you all this evening. It's wonderful, wonderful to feel such a connection to this community all the way in Austin. Of course, Rabbi Strauss, as he mentioned, is a proud alumnus and a parent of a current student. And so many of the children who grew up here at Beth Yashurin find their way to Austin as young adults. And we love having them as active parts of our Hillel community. Leah Stoller, our board president, uh, is here tonight and is another example of the connection between Beth Yashurin and Texas Hillel, along with so many of our alumni who have made this synagogue their home community. We are just about officially in mid-August. In my 13th year working for Hillel, we've come to know August as that exciting and busy time just before a new academic year begins. It's not lost on me how the start of school and the start of the new Jewish year essentially overlap. The month of Elul, which just began a few days ago, is that final month leading into the new year and the restart of the annual cycle. 
Elul is a time of reflection, a time to recount the year that is coming to a close. We take stock of lessons learned, of priorities that emerged, of our relationships and how we spent our time, and we prepare for the fresh start of Tishrei, spiritually and physically ready to take on a new year. And certainly from this past year in particular, so many of us are thinking about how we've been changed, what matters the most to us, and the opportunities we hope to seize in the year to come. For some of you here, the rapidly approaching fall will bring about a new chapter in life, college. Whether you are the student, looking over here, or the parent or grandparent of a new student, this is an exciting time filled with anticipation and a true marker of passage into a new phase of life. College can be a time of incredible learning, growth and exploration both in and out of the classroom. The friendships and relationships forged on campus for some are ones that last a lifetime. For the students here tonight, college also might be one of the first times you are given the ability to create your own daily routine, to determine how you will structure your day and spend your time, what groups or networks or communities you will be a part of, and a time to find your own voice and figure out how, where, and when you will use it. In a bit, I'm going to share a few tips and words of wisdom for incoming college students that a few of our student leaders at Hillel helped me come up with. But I want to take a moment to reflect on this week's Parsha, Shoftim, and really the stretch of the Torah that we've been reading the past few months as the Israelites wander through the desert and prepare to enter the land of Israel. From their exodus from slavery to approaching the Jordan River, the Israelites and their leaders have been on a journey towards the creation of community and national identity through the various challenges of finding food and water, building trust with their leadership, navigating rebellions, and simply learning how to set up systems and processes to be able to work together and thrive as a nation, even as they are part of different tribes, the Israelites have grown and are in a different place, physically and spiritually, than when they started. Moses has had to manage some tricky situations and was able to rely on his consultations with God and his relationships with leaders to facilitate solutions to keep the nation intact and moving forward. This week's text lays out the roles for different types of leaders, kings, priests, prophets, and judges, and how each have their voice and responsibility in the community to help it thrive. Notable to the name of the parsha, Shoftim, which means judges, a system of justice and the command of its pursuit, Tzedek Tzedek Tirdof, is core to the message given to the Israelites as they prepare for the next stage of their journey. The late Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, in one of his reflections on this parsha, notes that power and thus responsibility were to be distributed amongst different entities, not collected in one place. Prophets had the ability to be critical and call out corruption, rebuking the people when necessary. Priests had oversight over religious functions and practices. The Parsha also discusses the role of a king, permitting the Israelites to appoint one, as was the practice amongst most nations at that time, but places specific parameters on the monarch's qualifications. Notably, the king must be able to write a Sefer Torah and read it regularly. Rather than simply being the law, the king must be humble to the ongoing process of learning the law. We might draw from this that leadership is about learning and about service. It's not about the person at the top, it's about the people. So what does this have to do with being a Jewish student on a college campus? Well, we might make an analogy to the Israelites peering over the banks of the river into Eretz Israel to new freshmen packing their bags for move-in in a few weeks. But beyond that, the journey of the Israelites reminds us that each chapter in our lives is just that, a journey, with ups and downs, lessons learned, new characters, and ultimately the content of the journey helps make us who we are, whether it's each of us as individuals or our community as a collective. And leadership in our community isn't up to one or two people to take the responsibility and run with it. Our community has room for, and in fact needs, different types of leaders with different skill sets, different responsibilities in order to flourish. That was true of the ancient Israelites and is true of our community today, most especially on our college campuses. We, and by we I definitely mean our team at Texas Hill, but more broadly, I'll speak for those working on campus to support your Jewish experience, are ready and eager to welcome you, support you, and be there with you as you find your voice and your role in this community and in our tradition. As we start a new year on campus, I asked a few of our student leaders and recent grads at Texas Hillel what words of wisdom they would share with newer incoming students, but that resonate with returning students as well. There are four themes that emerged from their responses. Something small can turn into something big, nourish your Jewish self, approaching campus life in general and Jewish life in particular with a growth mindset, and you are in the driver's seat. So something small can turn into something big. I spoke with two students this week who shared similar stories from their freshman year. Something so simple, a quick text message that turned into a whole new world of friendships and community. 
college, even if you're at a small school, can feel big. It's new, there's new responsibilities to navigate, and inevitably there'll be some unfamiliarity. Working at Texas Hillel, primarily serving UT Austin with its 50,000 students, I often joke that a big part of our job is making a huge campus feel small and uh, helping make sure every student feels noticed. When you're trying to find that first step forward into your new environment, don't forget that it really is just that first step. One of our students laughed as he told me a story about his flight home to Dallas being rerouted to Austin the summer before he started freshman year. He hadn't even visited the UT campus and didn't plan to before enrolling. But he decided to get out of the airport during his overnight delay and check out campus. The only personal contact he had was a text message from an upperclassman, one of our Hillel student leaders, and a fellow Dallas native who had reached out to welcome him to UT. He replied, they ended up meeting, and the student not only had a couch to crash on, but had that first point of contact that introduced him to his eventual fraternity, to Hillel, and to a network of friends that had been central to his time on campus in his first two years. Another student, a freshman last fall, as we all managed with COVID and the challenging realities that it presented, reflected on how a simple introduction facilitated by one of our staff members at Hillel, who saw two students with similar interests and personalities led to a friendship that sustained her through last year. One text message, one step into a space to meet others, sometimes those little moments, the little chance we take to connect with someone or something can open up much bigger doors. Don't overlook what small steps can lead to. Nourish your Jewish self, lesson two. Students are multifaceted, you all know this. They have their academic major, social life, maybe they write for the school paper, running for student government, or they volunteer for a cause important to them, they play intramural sports, they start businesses, they hold a job, they're foodies or Netflix connoisseurs, they're sons, daughters, siblings, and friends. Our goal as Hillel is to help, really to empower students to make their Jewish self, their Jewish identity, part of the pie when thinking about their life and working with them to find how being Jewish connects with and can really shine alongside their other interests and activities. Part of that is taking time to nourish that part of you. Sometimes students come to campus and might say, yeah, the Jewish thing will be there when I'm out, you know, when I'm really an adult. Yes, that's true, but your time on campus is an opportunity to try on and figure out what being Jewish means to you. How do you want to balance Jewish values and Jewish community with all the parts of who you are on your own terms? Where do you find the joy in your Judaism? One of our students, a rising junior, shared with me that finding your own Jewish identity in college is truly an empowering experience. There are so many opportunities that already exist, but if one doesn't exist, there are people around you to support you in creating it. Another recent grad reflected that Judaism is yours to explore, shape, and experience. If you feel most Jewish when you walk around West Campus on a quiet Sunday morning, great. If you feel most Jewish laughing about camp stories with your new dorm friends, awesome. If you feel most Jewish singing prayers on a Friday night on the Hillel patio, great. No one's Jewish journey will look exactly the same, but that's what makes our community and the innate connections so special and strong. Don't cast it aside. Find where the meaning is for you and take care of that part of who you are. Growth mindset, number three. Beyond Jewish life, it's fair to say that college is a time of growth. Both moments of challenge in and out of the classroom and moments of achievement, fun, new experiences, there's so much to learn and grow from during these years. Be prepared to be challenged and be ready to learn and grow in ways you might not be able to envision right now. For many students, arriving to campus might be the first time you're surrounded by peers from different cities, different states, maybe even different countries. They will face opinions that challenge their own and perhaps feel called to respond or to engage in with hopefully constructive disagreement. The students I spoke with touched on this as well. One graduate from this past year said he would advise new students to embrace the opportunity to connect with people who might be different than you, both within the Jewish community and in the larger campus environment. He said, take pride in your Jewish identity and take interest in learning about others. He shared his experiences of meeting international students, of learning about clubs he hadn't previously known existed, and realizing the privilege he had to be in an environment surrounded by so many people with different backgrounds and interests than his own. Rising Senior spoke about leaning in to the newness of being a freshman, and he reminded me that everyone is in the same boat as one another. Even if someone seems like they have it all figured out, they too are grappling with new connections, new experiences, their curse load. One of our Rising Seniors told me, it's okay if you don't have everything figured out on day one. Things take time. Enjoy the ride. And finally, you are in the driver's seat. Perhaps a common thread here is that you are in the driver's seat. Maybe previously your parents signed you up for different activities. On campus, you more or less get to decide what a day looks like, when to do homework or write papers, when and where to have your meals, how to spend your time. I'll let you in on a trade secret. 
No one is going to be there to force you to do things. For your Jewish life, this might be a new feeling, but it's also a huge opportunity. An aspect of Hillel that personally I love and is one of the reasons I've made working on campus my career is that we get to be your co-pilot, or rather sit shotgun, on that journey as you navigate that path and that no two paths are the same. Like our students said earlier, there can be a lot of different routes, just like on Waze, to get to the destination. Maybe it's through communal Shabbat dinners and having a place to go and feel surrounded by community on Friday night with some challah thrown in. Maybe it's a regular volunteer opportunity. Maybe it's working with a mentor in the Jewish community who works in the field you hope to be in one day. Maybe it's through music or art or yoga. Maybe it's traveling to Israel with peers or maybe it's a tight-knit group of friends who share your values. Maybe it's all of these or maybe it's something else. But you have the ability to find yourself what, for yourself what being Jewish means for you, how it can be a part of your life, and what your voice is in the Jewish community. What is exciting is while the advice from our students and recent graduates was largely directed to individuals, you aren't alone in this. In fact, one of the beautiful things about college is having the opportunity to experience everything with others who are there alongside you. When you get to campus, both in your general life and specifically in your Jewish life, there are people there to be resources and to be a part of your journey. Remember the different types of leaders in our Parsha? Whether it's returning students who can share expertise or an extended invitation to get together, the professionals at your campus Hillel who are there to help you thrive, your RA, a professor, look for those who can guide you along your journey. So my closing blessing to the new students who will be heading to campus this fall, we wish you an incredible journey filled with meaningful connections, new opportunities, and the strength to find and know your voice. And to the parents and grandparents sending a student to campus this fall, enjoy this new chapter and relish in all that your student will learn and how they will make the story their own. I want to wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom, a safe and healthy closing few weeks of summer, and a wonderful year.